Hello again to another video about SQL Server tutorials. We will start with um, daytime functions. So let's just start with getting this uh, current date. Often you want to have in a query the current date because you want to set uh, a column uh, to a certain date when you load data or when you change data. So you have the standard function is get date. For functions you always have to do this uh, opening and closing uh, bracket here and there's only one exception that is current timestamp and this is a constant this is no function so you don't need those there but otherwise you always have to provide them so get date uh, selects the current date so as you can see here it is uh, date and time right and uh, current timestamp does the exact same. It is just for uh, standard use because current timestamp is actually SQL standard. While get date is a Microsoft uh, SQL, SQL invention. And we also have get UTC date because get date and current timestamp is always uh, the current date in your time zone, but get UTC date gets the universal time date in this example I'm sitting in Germany we have 20 we have 9 p.m. and the UTC would be 7 p.m. or 19 uh, and 21 for the 24-hour format okay so this is daytime one in a former video I explained the differences between daytime and daytime 2 so we have of course have also functions that return the current date uh, time in daytime 2 data type that is sys daytime so this day time uh, returns the same thing, but you see already here the difference. Let's just see here. We have in daytime format only all three digits after uh, a, a seconds, like milliseconds, and in daytime two we have seven. The difference you can see here in get date it says returns daytime, and here in get uh, in this day time and this UTC day time it says it returns daytime two with the precision of seven digits. That's what we actually can see here. Okay, so keep in mind this function returns much higher precision and please use current timestamp if it's possible because then your knowledge and your code is also applicable for other DBMSs. Okay, so what is if we only wanna have some parts of the time? So again, select get date gives us the date, but let's assume we want to know what month it is. Then we can say date part and date part function. And the first argument always wants to have it the interval, and then the sec second argument is always the date from which you want to extract the interval. Okay, for intervals we have here different things. For, uh, you can state mm for month, dd for day, yy for year, and so on and so forth. There are much more. Those are just the basic ones that you use all the time. So for instance, if you want to extract the current month of a date, uh, then you can here extract the three, okay, because it's March, and you see here the date, it extracted the three as a number, okay. Because you see here also it returns integers, so it returns a number, right? You can also extract extract the names of it. So what did you do? You need this for? Um, it's easy because a month has a name and a, a weekday has also a name. So you extract this with the function date name. And as if with uh, like with every uh, date function, you always provide first the interval that is the month or the day, or that this we will get is the weekday actually, and then the date from which you want to extract it. So for instance, if you select date name month from, from today, it says March, which is correct. Uh, if you do it for day, nothing will happen actually, because you don't want to have the 31st has no actual name. What the name is bound not to the 31st, but the name is bound to the day of the week. And this is abbreviated with DW for day of week. And if you do this with date name, you get the Thursday, which is also correct. Okay, this for um, extracting parts or names of dates. So now you wanna uh, maybe uh, have, uh, you want to add or subtract, uh, you want to calculate with date, dates or date time. So you can do this. For select get date, you get uh, again our date and if you add plus two, it will add two days actually. You see it here, in two days it's the 2nd of April, which is also correct. 
um, but you see it's it's not uh, easy now to add um, minutes or month or years okay of course for years you can just uh, calculate it a little bit with but with, my, uh, with, with minutes or seconds it gets very difficult also the plus and the minus only works for daytime it does not work for daytime 2 for daytime 2 you cannot apply plus or minus you can have uh, to use the dedicated functions that i want to speak of now um, the dedicated functions are basically your date add If you want to add something to a date, you do take the add, date add with positive uh, with positive increment, and if you want to subtract something, you take it with negative increment. For instance, you have the get date here, right? Then we add to our current date one month. So I always execute the get date with us so we can see the original date is thirty first of March, and now we have the thirtieth of April. It is actually added one whole month. You can also subtract one year from the get date, so we will have the 31st of March 2015 and it works as well. So you use date add for daytime too and you should also use it for daytime because as I told you, um, you can only add easily days uh, with plus and minus. So then you want to know what difference between two dates is. So you often want to know how many dates are between two dates or how many weeks or how many months or how many whatever. You have also a function for this. Let's first def define two dates. The first date is the 1st of January uh, 2000 at 12 p.m. and the, the second one is uh, the 2nd of February 2001 at uh, yeah 14 p.m. Actually, this does not make any sense. So just let's omit this. Okay. So now we can have the, the difference again. What interval we want to have years here between the two dates? Okay. okay it's one year difference. Well, how many months difference is it? We have to put month in here, then we see it's 30 months, okay, makes sense. How many days are they? Okay, it's 30, uh, 398 days. Okay, this worked pretty well. So you with uh, difference, you can use just date div and then also interval, date one, date two, no big deal. Returns, integer. So now we're done with date time data types. Next time we will cover character data types. If you have any questions, please use the comment section. Please subscribe to my channel and tune in the next time when we are covering character functions. Bye!